What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week seven of the GBA season four. And we're going to discuss the team that I built for my opponent this week, which is the Long Island Reggie Rockies and their coach, Drew, aka Nips. So we're going to go over the team builder right here. And I'm going to show you guys the team I brought first things first. No rain this week. There's uh, There was a cloud forming, and then Polly Toad was like, I'm going to get the f out of here. And, uh, and what happened was the rain was like, oh, let me, let me follow that guy. But the battle's happening all the way over here. You know, there's like the Pokeball Arena. And then there's like Drew over here. And then I'm over here. This is me, Geo. Uh, I get a smiley face by my name because this is my video. And you know, Drew gets a smiley face too. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Drew and I actually have battled quite a few times. I think I've battled him more than just about anybody else on YouTube. Uh, we always have really fun battles that are super all over the place he's uh, messaging me right now uh so i'm just gonna finish this video really quickly the, we always have these really interesting battles uh he has a series that i think is one of the most ingenious ideas of all of this ingenious i mean genius <laughs> one of the best ideas i've ever seen on youtube for a poketuber which is called the salty run back saturday series so i highly recommend you check nips out i'll leave a link to his channel in the description down below this video but um our battles always go really one way or the other. Uh, the first time we ever battled, I was doing a gym, one of my gyms, I was doing grass type gym, and I got a nice setup situation going on, and I baton passed over to a, uh, to a Mega Venusaur, and I swept five of his Pokemon, and then he came in with Volcarona, and he 6-0'd my team <laughs> with Volcarona, so I ended up losing that 1-0, just like, like, oh, I got him! No, just kidding, he got me. And then the next battle, we had, uh, was on his Salty Run Back series, and uh, he got a freeze on an Ice Beam with a Wish Cash, and I was kind of mad and just left the Pokemon in there as he switched into a B Sharp setup, and then 6 0 my team, so I lost that 6 0. Then we battled after that, and I 6 0 him. Then we battled again, and I 5 0 him. So it's like, we don't do little bit. We do all or nothing, I guess. I, I, I guess that's how, that's how we, they, that's just the way we work, that's the way we battle. That's the way we are. So let me go over the team I'm bringing. That's a little bit of a long story, but there you go. There's some info about uh, your favorite Poketubers there. Please tell us where your favorite. No, just kidding. Anyway, here we go. We're going to start off with two chains. Misprit is coming back to the battle. He's going to be Choice Scarfed again. I worry that some of these sets are becoming a little bit predictable. However, Mesprit is one of those Pokemon that even if you think I'm going to be bringing a specific set, you have to play around the potential that I'm not. Mesprit can be very bulky, he can be physical or special, uh, he can be a good support Pokemon, and he's gonna have to deal with that. Part of the things, I'll go over this right now, one of the things I noticed about his team very early on is that if it's not weak to Earthquake, it's weak to Ice Beam, and there's only three exceptions to that, and that's Alakazam, who dies to, like, literally anything. If Paper were a type in this game, like wet paper, it, that would be his primary typing, not psychic. Um, also, Quagsire is not weak to either of those, and Snorlax is not weak to either of those. But with the exception of those three Pokemon, Ice ground coverage is phenomenal for his entire team, so I hate to see him have to go up against a Mamoswine, but we'll see. Um, Two Chains is packing Psychic, Ice Beam, Energy Ball, and U-Turn. I very seriously considered not packing Psychic on him and giving him Dazzling Gleam. Uh, because a lot of the Pokemon that I hit with Psychic at first when I was doing Calcs, I still had super effective uh, damage for, like Hawlucha. Um But then I eventually decided that I just wanted to pack Psychic on it. It was safe. Uh, I can pop... At the point of this set is to come in against a lot of his... Pokemon. Two Chains is a, has an investment here that allows him to outspeed uh, Alakazam with the Choice Scarf. And that allows me to get a U-turn off, which almost one-shots it. I'm imagining right now that the Alakazam is going to be running Focus Sash uh, Magic Guard. You know, it's worth talking about now. Let's go over the six Pokemon I think he's bringing, and the answer is, I'm not entirely sure. This is probably one of the harder weeks. I've almost always had really good predictions about his team. But this week, my prediction is I had to narrow it down to Pokemon he's definitely bringing and then the potentials. So he's definitely bringing Altaria. There's no reason for him not to. It's a pretty strong Pokemon against my team. 
Uh, it can't really one-shot a lot of things, regardless of whether it's physical or special. But if it sets up, that's a, that's a problem for me. So every single Pokemon on my team needs to have something for it. Some way of dealing with it. So there's Altaria. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's bringing Quagsire because he, he can't not bring it. Um, it's a very good answer to Mega Swampert if I were bringing it. As you can see, I'm not. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to bring Mandibuzz. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be bringing Hawlucha. Uh, that's based on his previous matches. A lot of the Pokemon he's brought a lot. These are very high... Uh, these guys have seen a lot of starts. Then it kind of becomes a little bit different. And it depends on what he thinks I'm doing. So he could bring Roserade as another answer to my potential grass weaknesses like Mega Swampert. Roserade is a possibility. He could bring Magnezone to try and trap Proto, who is a dangerous threat, but now my only steal. Before, that would have been really good if I were bringing Ferrothorn, he'd want to bring that just in case, but now I'm not so sure. Uh, he could bring Blaziken if he wants to have an answer to, like, Bunny Sore. Uh, if it's Scarfed, it could be an answer to Viral. It could be an answer to... You know, some. I don't think he's going to bring it, to be honest. I, I really don't think he's going to bring Blaziken. Snorlax um, is actually a pretty potential threat to my team, and I'm pretty sure he's going to bring it. So I'm going to write that one in here. Snorlax, that went. Uh, that idea went into team prep a little bit. Altaria, Quagsire, Mandibuzz, Hawlucha, Snorlax. I'm guessing it's either Alakazam, who's just, you know, fast, hits hard, good filler, glass cannon for his team. Alakazam or Magnezone as the last Mon. So those are the Mons I kind of prepared for here. Two Chains here has Psychic, Ice Beam, Energy Ball, and U-Turn. And with that coverage, I have a lot of answers to a lot of his team. Mesprit has... Get out of here. Stupid phone. Okay. Uh, he's got Ice Beam to hit the... Uh, to... He's got Ice Beam to hit uh, Mega Altaria super effective. He's got basically nothing for the Jirachi, so I'll probably just U-turn out if that matchup happens. Ice Beam hits super effective on the Mandibuzz. Part of the reason I was considering Dazzling Gleam is that if he starts trying to do some Roost shenanigans, I could Dazzling Gleam him. But I realized that I'm faster than him, so Ice Beam's always going to be going off before he gets the Roost. Um, and Roost only lasts for the turn it's used on That's that you're grounded. It's not until you next use a move. So I'll be able to be hitting him with Ice Beam super effective every hit. Uh, I have Ice Beam to hit Hawlucha super effective, I have U-Turn to hit Alakazam super effective, I have Psychic to hit Cabalion neutrally but very hard, uh, I have Energy Ball on this guy to one hit KO Quagsire, I don't really have anything for Magnezone, uh, Blaziken super effective with Psychic, Ice Beam super effective against Roserade, and basically nothing against Snorlax either. I'm going to have to hit him with uh, with Psychic and, and hope for the best. Or just U-turn out of there also. So, uh, as you can see, having a little bit of problem with Steels on Mesprit. I could consider dropping U-turn for Flamethrower. And that's something... I don't think I'm going to do that though. I just, you know, I have a lot of answer to the Steel types. Most of my Pokemon do. So, I think I like the set that I have for 2 Chains the way it is. Proto is coming back, and you guessed it, guys. Choice banned, and he has Defog. And you know what? I'm getting a lot of criticism for this. I don't care. You guys can say what you will about this set. It's what I need. It's what I need from Proto. Proto is a late game cleaner for me. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, I maybe haven't been using him as protectively as I could have. I need to have him on the side. He needs to be there late game. His powerful priority is a big deal for me. Uh, in this circumstance, as a uh, banded variety i can almost one hit ko pretty much everyone on his team so after a little bit of chip damage the only person that can stand in his way is quagsire and mandibuzz uh, he's got superpower which is going to be huge he's one of the few answers i have for snorlax uh, you know i think i think this set works i was considering a, a swords dance set however too many pokemon on his team could have fire coverage and could one hit KO me, so there wouldn't be a lot of options for me to set up a Swords Dance. Maybe against Quagsire, who is a Pokemon that almost walls me anyway, and could burn me with a Scald. So I don't really want to do that. I could do it against Mandibuzz, but if he has 
foul play. It's just going to get stronger against me. You could almost one hit KO me. I'm sticking with Band. Critique me all you want, guys. It's what I need for my team. My team needs to be diverse in a different type of way than is normally and expected to be in, in the GBA. I, I gotta do it here, guys. Uh, Proto is coming back. Technician Choice Band Bullet Punch his EV set. Um, I <laughs> you know, it's he's level 50 and... Uh, why did I do this? This is me messing around. I don't know why I did that. I'm putting that there. To make an, even, an odd number. There we go. 252 HP, 252 attack. Um, he's not going to be outspeeding anything notably with a base 65 speed. A lot of Nips' team is base speed 80. A lot of them. So I'm not really going to be working to try and get towards that. I want to be a little bit bulky. Gives him more defog options if he starts trying to hazard set me. Worth noting, the hazard potential hazard setters on her te on his team. Jirachi can do Stealth Rock. Kabalion can do Stealth Rock. Quagsire can do Stealth Rock. And Roserade can do Spikes and Toxic Spikes. Uh, the potential defoggers or rapid spinners, Mandibuzz. That's it. Um, so you'd think that rocks would be a good option for my team. However, I don't really have anyone on my team that could set them up. I could have brought Mega Swampert, um, but I, <laughs> you know, I'm tired of, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm looking for for this, for this match. That's not going to be how I'm playing this match. And you'll see why when I finish talking about the team. Electivire is coming back. Life Orb, Motor Drive, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Hammer Arm, and Hidden Power Grass. So, Electivire is, I hope he doesn't notice this. I'm sure he will, Nips is a good player, but I hope he doesn't notice that Electivire can literally one hit KO more than half his team, and does, and two hit KOs literally everything with this set, except Snorlax. Now, I could have brought Fighting Type Stab to do that, and one of the things I would have to forego is HP Grass, which uh, does 82 to 98% to a Quagsire, who otherwise would kind of wall me. Now, Quagsire is not that much of a problem. Mesprit can one-hit KO it, Moltres can one-hit KO it, Gudra can almost one-hit KO it, but if he manages to keep it around till late game and I lose my potential answers to it, I'm going to be really upset with myself. I want Viral to be able to come in with a motor drive and not have to leave. Uh, if I manage to get a lightning attack striking Electivire, it's very dangerous for him. Uh, and he basically can't come back for it. As you can see here, the IVs I have set up are such that I will outspeed 157. I don't remember the math I did exactly here. I think it's that I want to be able to outspeed after a motor drive a choice scarfed... Yeah, it's a choice scarfed Roserade in case he's choice scarfed on Roserade that I can still outspeed it after I get a motor drive up. Uh, any extra EVs there? Oh no, it's... It's more than that. It's that I will outspeed a 90 base speed, which is Roserade innately. If it's Scarf and I have a motor drive, I outspeed it still. So that's the sort of idea there. If I get a motor drive off, I outspeed his entire team. He doesn't have a lot of priority on his team. Very little. Uh, I think Blaziken might be the only one with priority that's worth noting. So um, getting an outspeed set is very important for Viral. Thunder Punch is the stab of choice it will if i'm going down the list ice punch for mega altaria uh earthquake handles jirachi oh i dropped earthquake didn't i oh i see i see what i did here okay so actually the calcs i did are a little bit different in uh, <laughs> a little bit different on my calc sheet than in game so this is interesting so <laughs> let's learn my own brain right now so i switched out earthquake for hammer arm and I think that was because I wanted an answer to Snorlax. And I actually don't like that I did that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to change that. Let's see. Jirachi, without Earthquake, Thunder Punch is a two-hit KO. Earthquake is not a guaranteed one-hit KO, so that's interesting. Thunder Punch is my best move for Mandibuzz. Thunder Punch is my best move for Hawlucha. Thunder Punch or Earthquake, both one-hit KO Alakazam. Earthquake does a lot of damage to Kabalion, but so would Hammer Arm. Probably the, uh, yeah, an identical amount of damage. HP Grass for Quagsire. Earthquake, one hit KOs Magnazone, who otherwise, uh, I don't know that I would one hit KO with Hammer Arm, but I would do a lot of damage. Earthquake, one hit KOs Blaziken, otherwise I can't one hit KO. Ice Punch, one hit KOs Roserade. And Thunder Punch is 34 to 41% against Snorlax. Interesting. So. I think I need Earthquake on him. I think I need Earthquake on him because 
I can switch into Magna Zone so easily on this set. It resists basically everything. If he's packing Hidden Power Ground, props to Nips, I'm... But he's only got one Hidden Power on Magna Zone, and it's either Fire for Scizor, which he do I don't think he needs because Thunderbolt does almost as much damage. Um, it could be Ground for Electivire, or it could be grass for mega swampert i don't really see anything else maybe ice for gudra but that's a mistake he's not going to take out gudra with uh with magnezone that's just not going to happen could be rock for moltra i mean he he's got a hidden power guys like i know he's got a hidden power you kind of have to prepare one way or the other um let's say you know what i am going to change this though i'm going to go back to earthquake like I said before, the uh, the ice ground coverage is just too strong for his team, and Snorlax could be a problem. And you know what? If I if this goes down as the moment that I lost the game to him because Snorlax is gonna curse set me, then we'll see. We're gonna move on. We've got Fox coming back. One of my MVPs, Fox the Moltres. Uh, he's got Life Orb, Pressure, and he's packing Flamethrower, Air Slash, Will O Wisp, and Roost. Here's why: not Overheat and not. Um, fire Blast. Accuracy. Um, and because fi anything I would use Flamethrower on, or anything I'd use Fire Blast or Overheat on dies to Flamethrower. Other than that, I have Air Slash, Will-O-Wisp, and Roost, so I can kind of stay in there. Moltres does serious work to this guy's team. Uh, Air Slash is a two-hit KO on Mega Altaria. I outspeed, so I will win that in a 1v1 face-to-face. -face. Um, if he gets stealth rock ups, uh, stealth rocks up. Unfortunately, uh, I can't survive to a uh, stealth rocks and one hit for Mega Altaria. Flamethrower uh, does not one hit KO Jirachi, but comes very close, and Jirachi has nothing in return. Overheat would do a lot to uh, Mandibuzz, but I think probably the better idea is to go for Flinch Hacks with Air Slash. Uh, he can't really do much back with Foul Play. He could Toxic me, that's Toxic and try to Roost Stall, but that's a risky game for him. Uh, Air Slash one hit KOs Hawlucha, Flamethrower one hit KOs Alakazam, Overheat one hit KO, or Flamethrower over hit Flamethrower one hit KOs Cabalion, HP Grass one hit KOs. Oh, I took off HP Grass. Why did I take off HP Grass? I guess I don't think Quagsire is that much of a problem. Like, at first when I was building the team, I was building it because I wanted Mega Swampert to be able to do something. Then I was like, you know what? I don't need the rain. I don't need Mega Swampert that much. And I kind of changed it. Um, Quagsire can be handled by basically anyone on my team one-on-one, -on -one, so I'm really not all that worried about him. I guess I just really didn't want to... I didn't. I wanted to make this guy more of a chip, not a one-hit KOer, but... Yeah, maybe I'll switch. No, I, I'm happy with the way I'm happy with the way this set is. He's 252 speed, 252 special attack. Uh, four HP is gonna go. I don't know. I had I didn't realize I had that. Let's put it into uh, physical defense in case someone has like a rock slide somewhere. But I don't anticipate that's gonna matter. Uh, we're gonna move on to Gyarados. This is a bulky Dragon Dance Gyarados set. It's designed in a very specific way to be an answer to potentially. Hawlucha and Snorlax. He has Roar in case someone gets a sub up. Um, GLaDOS is going to basically be my switch into Hawlucha anytime he hits the field. I want to get that Intimidate off before he gets has the potential to get a sub up. Even if he hits a Swords Dance on my switch, uh, he will still be only at plus one and he can't really do much to GLaDOS outside of Thunder Punch. I can scout for that. I could do like a Switch into GLaDOS, Intimidate, switch immediately to Viral and see if he goes for Thunder Punch and I could get a Speed Boost or something like that. There's there's options. I have idea, I have plans for how to deal with Hawlucha. Hawlucha could be his his big ace in the hole answer to me. I have to take it very seriously and Gyarados is why I'm doing that. Uh, roar and Dragon Dance so I can sort of boost alongside Snorlax and then roar him out. Uh, potentially on like a big sleep turn. And then I can sort of sweep his team with, like I said before, er, like ground ice coverage is incredible for his team. The final Pokemon on my team, oh, he's Intimidate with Leftovers, obviously, to try and get some recovery back. Full HP investment, full attack investment. I didn't want to go too deep down the you're a wall roll. Um, I could have packed Toxic on something, but... I mean, I think that would have negated the purpose of Dragon Dance. I could have dropped Dragon Dance for Toxic, but uh, again, I, I think 
it's more likely that I'll be able to handle the threats I need to handle if I have Dragon Dance as a potential bit. Uh, we've got Bunny Sword as my last Mon. He's packing Draco, Ice Beam, Earthquake, and Focus Blast. Again, we've got that ground, ground ice coverage. We've got Focus Blast as a last ditch Snorlax uh, counter again. And we've got Draco just for if he doesn't really have a safe switch, if Altaria's down, or if he's not switching. In you know what? He could even switch in Altaria, and unless it's the physical set, which I'll have to scout for, I could just feel free to go for Draco. He switches in, I Ice Beam him, because uh, the special set he has cannot, uh, can only has a chance to two hit KO me. Whereas the physical set can one hit KO me, so I gotta scout for that. There's a lot of scouting I need to do for his team, but overall I think this team's gonna work out pretty well. A couple of holes I wish I could cover, but I think overall I'm happy with how this team is. It handles a majority of his threats. I've got specific counters to some of the ones that I think are more threatening than others, but overall I think I'm safe with any Pokemon in here. I have good switches to a lot of his coverage. So I just, it's a lot of scouting. It's going to be a big scouting game to see what he's brought. So I'm going to get into this match right now. Uh, this video is going to go up on Saturday and you guys will see this battle on Sunday. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.